Today, I'll be breaking down the 2001 film, The Princess Diaries. Mia Thermopolis is a reserved 15-year-old who resides with her artist mother in a converted firehouse in San Francisco. She is aware of societal issues and struggles to connect with peers, leading to her lack of popularity at school where she is frequently targeted by a cheerleader named Lana Thomas. Mia counts Lily Moskowitz as her closest friend since they share similar traits. She harbors feelings for Josh Bryant, a popular boy who is Lana's boyfriend. Mia envisions herself in Lana's place when she spots them kissing. During a school debate, Mia faces Josh, while Josh wins over the crowd with his assertive views. Mia falters and stutters, causing her classmates to laugh and leading to her running off in embarrassment. After school, Mia's mother reveals that her paternal grandmother has traveled from Genovia to San Francisco with intentions to meet her. Mia is puzzled by her grandmother's sudden interest after years of no communication. The next day, Mia visits the given address, only to discover a grand mansion. She is greeted by a butler who introduces her to her grandmother, Clarice Rinaldi. It is then that Mia learns Clarice is the queen of Genovia, a small European monarchy, and that her late father was the crown prince, making Mia the heir to the Genovian throne. Initially, Mia thinks it's a prank, but the pieces soon fall into place, and she is astounded to realize her royal lineage. The queen explains that Mia must move to Genovia and transform into a completely different person. Overwhelmed, Mia rejects the notion of becoming a princess and flees. Upon returning home, she confronts her mother for concealing their royal ties. It emerges that following the divorce of Mia's parents, they decided that Mia should grow up with her mother so she could have a normal upbringing. Mia was initially meant to learn of her royal lineage when she turned 18. But her father's untimely death necessitated her earlier involvement in royal duties. The following day, discussions about her new role took place between Mia, her mother, and the queen. The queen expressed a desire to present her as a princess to the public. But first, she planned to groom Mia in the ways of royalty. Despite Mia's reluctance, her mother convinced her to participate in the princess training and then decide whether she wishes to embrace her royal identity. Until the upcoming ball, Mia's true identity was to remain a secret. Subsequently, the queen assigned Joe, the head of security, to protect Mia and ensure her safety until her official introduction to society. Mia was also provided with a limousine for her daily school commute which astonished her friend Lily when she joined her in the luxurious vehicle. After school one day, Mia visited an auto repair shop and discovered her old vehicle would cost $400 to fix. Michael, Lily's brother who has long harbored feelings for Mia, works there but has been largely unnoticed by her. Following this, Mia's first princess lesson took place at the royal mansion. The queen scrutinized her appearance and instructed her assistant on what changes were necessary. She also emphasized the importance of proper posture and hygiene suitable for a princess. Over the following days, Mia was educated on various royal etiquettes, including dancing, dining, and personal presentation, requiring her to visit the mansion daily after school. This new schedule unfortunately strained her time with Lily, who felt increasingly isolated as Mia was her closest companion. One day, the queen arranged for an Italian stylist named Paolo to perform a makeover on Mia. Despite Paolo's polite remarks about her natural looks, his body language suggested he felt differently. His team worked on transforming Mia, tweezing her eyebrows, straightening her hair, and enhancing her appearance with facials and manicures. They even replaced her glasses with contact lenses. By the end of the session, Mia had undergone a complete transformation leaving the queen very pleased with the outcome, though she instructed Paolo and his team to keep the makeover confidential. Mia and Joe head out to fetch Lily from school. Upon seeing her transformed appearance, Michael is captivated by her beauty. Lily, on the other hand, is displeased with her new look, fearing she is becoming one of the popular, unkind girls at school. In an effort to conceal her hairstyle, she forces Mia to wear an unflattering hat, this leads to a heated dispute, as Lily fears Mia will soon abandon their friendship. Unable to bear Lily's apparent apathy, 
Mia reveals the real reason behind her makeover. Lily is taken aback by the revelation but agrees to keep Mia's secret for her safety. During a class session, Lana challenges Mia to remove the hat, and her classmates are taken aback by her stunning hair. The next day, Michael invites Mia to join him at a music convention where he is scheduled to perform. Eager for her to see his musical passion, Mia agrees to attend but seems indifferent. Upon her arrival at school, she is bombarded with questions from reporters who have learned about her royal status. The news has leaked, and Mia is in a predicament. She suspects Lily of divulging her secret, though Lily denies any involvement. As the situation escalates, the queen arrives at the school and it's discovered that Paolo, the stylist, disclosed Mia's status to the press in pursuit of fame. That evening, the queen hosts a royal dinner party, introducing Mia to esteemed royals from across the globe. The event proceeds smoothly until Mia accidentally sets a guest's sleeve on fire and plunges his arm into an ice bucket. Chaos ensues as a server trips, spilling fruit on the guests. The queen is exasperated by the chaotic dinner, yet the guests manage to find humor in the situation. During the next training session, contrary to Mia's expectations, the queen is not upset with her. Instead, she clears her schedule to spend the day with Mia. They enjoy a delightful day at the arcade, engaging in Mia's favorite games, capturing moments in a photo booth, and savoring her preferred corn dogs. The day marks a special memory for both as they share these joyful experiences. Returning home, Mia is behind the wheel but encounters trouble when attempting to ascend a hill. Due to the car's brakes failing, she ends up colliding with one of San Francisco's iconic cable cars, which is crowded with passengers. Though the police prepare to take Mia into custody, the queen skillfully employs her oratory talents to convince the officers to release them. By the conclusion of this incident, a police car is even summoned to transport the royalty back to their residence. Mia admires her grandmother's adept handling of the situation, even labeling her the finest queen. The following day at school, Mia finds herself besieged by classmates seeking her autograph. Previously unnoticed, she suddenly becomes the center of attention. Lana feigns friendship towards her in front of a journalist for personal gain. Meanwhile, Mia's longtime crush, Josh, invites her to a beach party on Saturday, and she accepts, subsequently apologizing to Michael for being unable to attend the convention with him leaving him visibly disappointed by her choice. That evening, Mia's mother remarks that Josh's interest only peaked after discovering Mia's royal status. But Mia dismisses her concerns. The beach party initially proceeds without a hitch, until reporters disrupt the festivities seeking further sensational stories. Mia and Josh take refuge in a shack where he attempts to kiss her. But she pulls away sensing something is amiss. When they emerge, Josh plants a forceful kiss on her to stir up media buzz. Later, Lana and her clique coax Mia into changing her outfit in a tent, then invite paparazzi to capture images of her clad only in a towel, ensuring scandalous headlines the next morning. Distraught, Mia returns home and seeks comfort in her mother's embrace. The next morning, the unflattering photographs are plastered across the news with sensational and exaggerated captions. Disappointing the queen, Mia expresses regret for her actions and doubts her suitability as a princess. Nonetheless, the queen still extends an invitation for Mia to attend the upcoming ball and encourages her to bring friends, explicitly excluding Josh. Upon Mia's departure, Joe helps the queen see that Mia is first and foremost a teenager and her granddaughter. Aside from her princely duties, they both conclude that Mia is prepared to embrace the responsibilities of leading their nation. Given her mature response to the criticism she faced, at school, Mia offers her apologies to Lily for her recent aloof behavior and for not attending the talk show Lily had invited her to. They make amends and agree to attend the ball together. In a subsequent gym class, Josh resumes teasing Mia, prompting her to retaliatively strike him with a ball and outplay him in a baseball game, teaching him a lesson in the process. That evening, Michael stops by Mia's house to drop off her car which he brought from the repair shop. Mia expresses regret for missing his show and asks him to accompany her to the ball. Michael,
feeling slighted, declines her invitation with a sarcastic suggestion that Josh might make a better companion in formal wear. During lunch, Mia and her geeky friend endure mockery from Lana and her clique. Fed up, Mia retaliates by smearing ice cream on Lana's dress, humiliating her in front of everyone. The queen later seeks Mia's forgiveness for her previous stern demeanor and requests Mia to deliver a resignation speech at the ball. Relinquishing her title, she also presents Mia with a diary, a gift her father intended for her 16th birthday. Overwhelmed by the pressure and fearing she might let down both the queen and the attendees with her speech, Mia plans an escape to Colorado. While packing, she discovers a letter from her father emphasizing the significance of bravery for royalty and expressing his deep love for her and her mother. Moved by his sentiments, Mia resolves to face her duties and attend the ball, despite having to drive through torrential rain. Unfortunately, her car breaks down en route. Elsewhere, Michael receives a pizza with, sorry, written in topping, leading him to realize Mia's attempts at reconciliation. He decides to attend the ball after all. As Mia begins to lose hope, Joe swoops in with a limo to rescue her. When Mia fails to show up on time, the queen begins the speech at the ball. When Mia is significantly delayed, the queen begins her speech. However, upon noticing Mia arriving soaking wet but ready to address the crowd, the queen gracefully exits the stage. Initially, Mia fumbles over her words as she often does during public addresses. But soon she recalls her father's advice and delivers a moving speech to the audience. As she concludes, she declares herself the Princess of Genovia, earning enthusiastic applause from those present. Shortly after, Mia is officially crowned princess and slips into a stunning gown to share a dance with Michael. The couple later retreat to the garden where Michael shares his feelings, culminating in their first kiss. In the subsequent scene, Mia departs for Genovia to embrace her responsibilities as royalty. Accompanying her are her mother, and Michael and Lily who plan to spend their summer vacation there. As the film wraps up, viewers are treated to a grand view of the expansive royal palace in Genovia. That concludes the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and click the like button to support us. Feel free to leave a comment about this movie. Until next time. Take care.